Am I an adult? What makes an adult? How do we define adulthood? There's lots of things you can do when you become an adult. You can vote, you can buy a house, you can get a, you can get a proper job. But what about in terms of behavior? When an infant grows into a toddler, there's new things that they're able to do. And with that comes new behavior as well. When my daughter Charlotte grew from infant to toddler, her capability expanded. Everything on tabletops was now fair game. But also, she developed new behaviors. She found the tantrum. And she used it, especially when she wanted to go on the trampoline. She's going to kill me. But those behaviors were entirely appropriate for that stage of development. We expect our toddlers to tantrum. And in fact, as a person goes through life, you go through many of these key stages of development. And with each one comes new capability and new behavior. Some of these transitions take place in a relatively short window of, of change from a couple of years at the most to a matter of weeks. But the change from adolescence to adulthood is, I believe, one of the most important changes. It's important for you. It's important for your families, for our families, for our communities, for our culture. And yet, it is so hard for us to define that change in terms of behavior. Ask any teen the difference between them and adulthood, and you'll hear words like cringe and boring and serious. But ask any adult what the difference is between them and a teenager, and you might get some awkward looks and a confession that actually they still feel like a teenager and still think of themselves as a teenager deep down. We don't have the structures that help an adolescent transition into, a, into an adult anymore. Let me prove it to you. How did you mark your rite of passage into adulthood? If you're like most of the people that I ask, you maybe celebrated the occasion with friends, with maybe family, and for some of you, a, a little alcohol was involved. So if your memory of the occasion is hazy, don't worry, you're in good, you're in good company. So that's it. Celebration with friends and family, and you're an adult. No ordeal, no sacrifice, no transformation, just drinks with friends and family, and that's it. Without the right paths of initiation, without effective rites of passage, I believe this is why we have so many adults today going through life in a state of arrested behavioral development. I first saw this in the work I do with leaders who have something important to say and something important to sell, usually on television or online. And to prepare them for this, I would put them in these artificial rehearsal situations in a studio environment, lights, cameras. And when I did this, and these high pressure, high performance conditions, I saw some really weird behavior. I would see defiance. 
I would see these adults getting upset. Suddenly they would become obsessed with a strand of hair out of place or getting a word absolutely right. I would see defiance. I would see them sort of fighting against my instruction and authority. I was seeing teenage behavior, right? I mean, let's look at adolescent behavior for a second. It is marked by increased fixation on appearance, increased fixation on perfection, wanting to get it right. Adolescent behavior is marked by decreased responsibility, decreased accountability. Any of you parents of teenagers out there are nodding along, I know. Increased, excuse me, decreased, decreased impulse control. But just like tantruming to a toddler is completely appropriate, these behaviors, these behaviors are completely appropriate for an adolescent. But when are they appropriate for an adult? When is it appropriate for you to exhibit these behaviors? When is it appropriate for our parents to exhibit these behaviors? When is it appropriate for our teachers to exhibit these adolescent behaviors? When is it appropriate for our leaders to exhibit these behaviors? Unless we are able to create effective rites of passage, the behaviors from the previous stage of development will persist. There's some good news. We already have in place the structures to successfully initiate between stages of development. We use them. They work. Let's take an example. Potty training. When an infant transitions to a toddler, they have to learn a whole new set of, let's call it bathroom behavior. And as with every effective rite of passage, there are three key elements to it. Let's go through those. Step one, phase one, is ordeal. The infant who, let's face it, hitherto has had all of their mess taken care of for them didn't need to do anything, except maybe cry, now has to learn a set of complex, frustrating, challenging, painful procedures. Step two, sacrifice. The infant now has to give up for good the old behaviors, never to go back. I mean, short of the odd accident here or there, never to go back to the old behavior. And step three, transformation. The change is witnessed and celebrated, not privately, but publicly. I mean, literally everyone gets to see and cheer along and applaud the infant as they master this new behavior. Everyone's in on it. Parents, siblings, uncles, aunts, the elders, the grandparents, everyone witnesses and applauds and celebrates the change. We need these same rites of passage in our world right now. But for this most important Rite of passage from adolescence to adulthood. If we can do this, if we can introduce these structures, not to the detriment of play and curiosity, not to the detriment of fun, those are not the sole domain of childhood and adolescence. But if we can create these structures we can create adults who, under high-pressure, high-performance situations, won't revert 
to previous stages of development. We've all seen an adult demonstrate teenager-like behavior, haven't we? We've seen it on television. We've maybe seen it in person. Maybe that was you. It's never pretty, is it? And with the demands of adulthood becoming ever more fervent and busy and intense, now more than ever, we need these rites of passage in our families, in our schools, in our communities, in our, in our culture. We need, we need adult potty training. Maybe then we can say for sure what an adult is. Thank you very much.